All right, this is TK Shazam. I'm just a nerd who likes Tekken and talking about it. Right. Uh, this is just gonna be me gushing about very one particular move from Paul, and yeah, just this is it. Right. All right, let's let's talk about it. In Tekken Eight. It's you'll hear a lot of people say that it's just Tekken Seven Paul, which to a degree the core is still there, but they gave him some new tools. Right. He's got forward four. This move is really good, in my opinion. It just does everything, right? Uh, he's got a forward two. This is pretty good, but then he's got he's got a few more. Well, I think lost any one two. This is this is a really crazy move, honestly. I gotta explore this more. Anyway, I want to talk about down forward four. This this little uh, this little guy right here. Oh my god. Okay. Let's break it down. What is down forward 4? Down forward 4 is a 17 frame mid that is plus 8 on hit and plus, minus 2 on block. It's 17 damage? It's pretty respectable. And on counter hit, you get guaranteed plus 14, right? So you can do back 1, 2. You can do down 1 plus 2. You can do forward two, and now you're in heat. It's pretty neat. Let's break it down why, right? The first thing is just look at how far this move goes, right? I'm looking at range three, 2.9, 2.9, and it'll still connect, right? Paul's kind of a big guy, so maybe on the smaller characters at this far range it'll whiff. But at any point, right, a player is typically worried about quarter circle forward three from here. His other mids aren't so, you know, he's got he's got this, right? He's got quarter circle back two. He's got forward one plus two. But his faster mids aren't always going to reach. So here he just got this big ass knee. All right. It advances Paul super far forward, but also, most importantly, keeps Paul at a really nice minus two. It's just not something he's had before, right? Typically, you if you want to be a minus two against the opponent, you need to be at close range with down forward one. Right? At farther ranges, Paul will have down one, but this move will leave him at minus nine on block. Sure, he's safe, but now you're minus nine, so movement is very restricted. The opponent basically gets to mix you up for free. Or options like quarter circle back two. Still, minus nine, there is some pushback, but Paul is just, all right, my turn is over, have fat it, right? You get to play the game a little bit and I have to just hold it. You can be cheeky and try to steal back turns here and there, but it's just not always the case, right? Even something like course circle forward three plus four, right? Minus nine, right? All of those mids are very powerful, but your turn is over. You gotta just let it go. Down forward four, not the case at all. At minus two, you can do so much, right? Be cheeky with a jab. Your jab will only lose to moves that are 12 frames or faster. Most mids, right, the down forward ones of this game are 13 frames, right? So you can easily just safely challenge them. If your jab connects, you're plus eight again. If you're plus eight, you frame trap with down forward four. A 17 frame move that's gonna beat anything that they press. It's pretty neat, right? Let's say, well, what, what, are, what are some downsides to it? <laughs> it's weak to sidestep, right? Let's go, let's the prank. Let's go standing block. All right? Very easy for the opponent to sidestep it. It will still track sidestep left. Oh, sidewalk, it'll avoid. But let's do sidestep. See how it catches them? 
So you can argue like, oh, well, Paul's, you know, weak to sidestep right, it doesn't cover it. That's fine, right? At the ranges you want to be using this move at, when you're just dancing around the opponent, are they are they going to react? They're going to react to a 17 frame move and and somehow sidestep right on reaction? They can predict it, sure. But at that point, if you notice the opponent just preemptively sidestepping right at this far range, you can either just delay it, right? Or you just do a move that tracks sidestep, uh, sidestep right. Boop. Right. For mids, you'll have down forward one. It's a bit weird. You want to be familiar with the ranges that it works at, but his down forward one will usually do fine. The idea that Paul does not have to give up his turn on block is very rare and enables a lot of crazy opportunities, right? Look at down forward for a block. Whoop. Oh, that's already on standing block. I'm so close to the opponent, I wonder. On block, look at that clean hit, right? High risk, obviously, but a lot of reward. Try doing Demo Man after down one. Sure, it might work sometimes. You see here, if they try to move, the clean hit gets messed up. And it's also very slow, right? The power of Demo Man is its speed. At minus nine, right, you're gonna get beat up by everything. But here, you're minus two, and you get a clean hit. This can be very risky, but very rewarding, because now, all of a sudden, the opponent's gonna be freaking out, and they'll have to do, you know, they'll want to challenge it. They can't step. They'll want to sidestep duck, at which point you can go forward four, right? Or down forward one. A lot of options. You can start to see the synergies form, right? Because Paul no longer has to commit, he can be a little bit greedier with his turns. My jab hit. I'm plus eight, frame trap with down forward four, repeat the situation. It gives him a lot of extra utility in his options that he did not have before. Especially for keep out, right? Imagine the opponent running in at you and you just do this unreactable mid, right? We talked about previously how options like quarter circle back four are really nice, right, on keep out. You're running away, running away, course circle back four, running away, running away, down forward two, right? Boop. But sometimes down forward two, you know, maybe the range is a little awkward, you're not certain. Now you have down forward four. If they're if the opponent is not dashing into range, Paul will meet them, right? Look at this. Boom. Boom. Look at that. Did you see the opponent even dash up, right? Getting a read on the opponent's timing and then just going, all right, here's my super mid, right? At plus eight, you can just start looping this. They can't move. They can't challenge this by pressing a button. They just got to block. But once they block, right? You're only minus two. There's Demo Man. There's a grab. All right, whoops. There's a grab. If they start jabbing you in response, you can call out with the duck into wall standing four. You're plus five again, down forward four again. You can create entire game plans off this move, right? Big fan, big, big fan. And the real crazy part is when it gets into a really good read on your opponent's timing. Let's go. At plus 14, start looping this, I got 40 free damage, and I get to either stay in the neutral, oh, the opponent's approaching, do it again, okay, stay in the neutral, stay in the neutral, boom, again, or oh, they're at the wall, right, you start to, as you play with it more, just, <laughs> it's one of those buttons, I don't say this often about Paul, but you just go, all right, just press it. Just do it. Whoops. Look at that. I could 
gush about this move all day. This move is awesome. I like with a lot of Paul stuff, is it suddenly going to fix any issues you might have on defense or learning the opponent's offense and having to learn defense in this game? No. But once you're able to properly get an understanding of the opponent's timing, or once you just have that defense built in, this move, this move can open up a lot of opportunities. Now, obviously, I'm pretty hyped about this move, but where, where do you, you know, with his other mids that are still very powerful, what, what happens, right? Does this replace all of his mids? Not necessarily, right? At the more subtle frame trap situations, let's say you got a, oops, counter hits on. Let's say you got a nice back four or a nice sidestep three. Down forward four will still be pretty good, but you'll trade with 13 frame down forward ones, right? And the opponent can very easily jab you. Here, and ah, I'd have to test if the trade you can still get the counter hit follow up, but I don't know. But here, if you get down forward one, right, this will lock down and then beat up anything the opponent will press, besides like maybe a jab. Or you'll trade with jabs at least, right? So it's a tighter frame trap. I think down forward four is still, there are still times where you're going to want to use this after a back four on hit or side step three on hit. It's just not always, right? You still want to use down forward one. And we talked about how down forward four does not track side step right, down forward one will in most situations. And also the utility of down forward one backsway is still very powerful, right? Boop, delay it, boop, right? It, 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 there's a lot of mining games with down forward one that you won't get with down forward four, right? They serve a different purpose, a different type of mind game. Versus something like forward one plus two, right? I Hammer of the Gods, it's still a really good move. Pretty much all you need, right? Big chunky mid that's plus on hit, plus on block, forces crouch, really locks the opponent down. Basically, when do I want to use down forward four versus forward one plus two? If I really want an airtight frame trap, right? Like we talked about it, if I get a jab punish, I'm plus eight. If I get down forward four on hit, I'm plus eight. If I think the opponent is gonna challenge with a jab and I don't necessarily want to deal with it, I'll just do down forward four again. But if I think, okay, I've conditioned the opponent to not press after this move on hit or after my, after my one, two on hit, right? I'm like, okay, I can be a little bit greedier. So I'll do forward one plus two. If it gets blocked, cool. We already know what to do with frame traps and movement there. If it hits, awesome. Free damage into more frame traps and anything else I could want, right? So there's still there's still a lot of use cases for both, right? And of course, versus down forward two, down forward four is great, but it's not a launcher, right? Down forward two on defense will still help with a lot of frame traps. The key distinction though, is that versus down forward two, your turn again, it's over on block, right? Oops. Down forward four, it's not. Versus something like standing three. Here, I think this is still usable for keep out, right? Sometimes you don't always wanna approach the opponent like this, right? Sometimes you just want to go, I'm just going to poke and keep you out, right? So there's still utility there. And with down one, it's really about the speed. The speed of this move is very underrated, right? And now with some, you know, new toys like wall standing one, two, the crouch transition is pretty neat. If there's more off the top of my head, I... <laughs> I'm having a brain fart right now, but I gushed about this move for a pretty long time. Hopefully this gives you some ideas about what the move is, how to use it, when to use it in comparison with your other tools. If you're not using it, you know, hey, free country, you are more than welcome to play how you please, right? But consider it, give it a shot, mess around with it and explore like, okay, 
versus this move. Do I want this move or do I want down forward four? And so on and so forth. All right, have a good one.